Hi, this is Paul Stolt from iPhone Dev TV. I'm playing around right now with designable views. These are views that you can design and create options that allow you to interact with them. So what we have right now is a pop-up view, and this is something I've done for my course that I'm teaching. And I have the ability to choose different things, and it will customize this unique component that I have created. Now, working with these can be a little bit challenging, and I just discovered that you can actually debug these. So if I click on this and everything is working, on the editor tab, we're going to see that it's going to automatically refresh views. And what that means is that it's going to build and compile them for you every time you come to the storyboard file. So what happens is if I were to click off of this and then click back on, then you're going to see that up top it's going to do some running designable custom views on iPhone 6. So it's going to do some stuff. You'll see the, the bar slide a little bit. I'll do that one more time so you can just take a look at it. You'll see that this will do some work up top and it's good to go. Now, sometimes you'll see that this content, if you have changed it in your, your driving files, like the pop-up view.swift file, which you can see if I scroll up, this is an IB designable class. And then it's got inspectable elements that I'm exposing different properties with. And so this is cool because now I can see some of the placeholder stuff that I haven't been able to do until Xcode 6. Now, one of the things that you need to keep in mind here is that sometimes you can write buggy code. And so that's where this refresh views helps. It helps you see the changes that you make, though I find that to be a little bit buggy. And then there's the debug selected views, which should do some stuff. If anything bad happens, you'll see the debugger pop up and then you'll have to debug it. And in this case, nothing bad happened. I'm going to show you what can happen when you do mess things up. All right, so pop-up view has a, a view property. This is an implicitly unwrapped optional. Now, the contract that you create with an implicitly unwrapped optional is that this will always have a value when you go to use it. I can introduce a bug if I try to use this view object before it is initialized. And that's an easy way to show you how I can break this code. And I, I ran into some issues where sometimes this was really glitching out. And we'll see what happens when I try it again. All right, so the setup function that I have here gets called by both initializers. And this allows me to load an XIB file, which I've used to customize that layout. So you can see that this XIB file is created here. It's got auto layout set on it so that it will show you some stuff let me show you that it's got the constraints. So here's a, a bunch of constraints, setting it up so that it hopefully can stretch a little bit. And then this code is going to load from the XIB file, which is down here. And then I am trying to set the view's background color before it has been initialized. So this is the point where the view is initialized. And let's see what happens when we go to run this. All right, so if I go to run this right now, it will crash and it will crash at runtime of the actual iPhone app. Now this is different. Let me just stop this. This is this is different than actually debugging the view itself. So it, let's go over to the main that storyboard and it's going to try and build. You'll notice now that I have three errors. These errors are with the storyboard file, not the actual app that is running. And you'll see that it's an IB designables failure. So it's failing to update my auto layout status. The Cocoa Touch cool tool crashed. Uh, then it's trying to render it. It took longer than 200 milliseconds. I've seen this one before and I didn't know how to deal with it. And then we've got another fail to, to render. So you're going to see these weird error message pop up. And then down here, you'll see that there's a fatal error, unexpected found nil while unwrapping an optional value. So if I click on any of these, nothing's really helping me out. I'm, I'm kind of out of luck here. I don't know what to do. I see that I have a fatal error. It's nice at least that we have a, a printout here, although I have no idea where in my view hierarchy that this nil is happening because with a, a storyboard file, you don't traditionally run code. And now we have the ability to run some code. And so there's this option under editor for debugging the selected view. So if we go ahead and do this, we now get into the debugger, which is actually really useful. And I've run into issues where it's not so useful. So this is 
eye-opening because now I have the exact area where the thing was happening. Before, it just told me it couldn't build it. I had no idea why it couldn't build it. Now I can figure that out, and I'm not sure if this will... I don't think this shows up if you don't click that option, and that's something that we can we can test out. But what's happening here is we're unwrapping an implicitly unwrapped op optional, which needs to be set, and you can see that it's set to nil. So anytime you try to use this, where you say view dot, that's going to cause an issue because we're not using optional chaining. We're just assuming that this value exists. And if this value does not exist, you will get a runtime crash. And so what's happening is when we try to use this in the interface designer, it's crashing there before we even get to opening the app. So if I comment this out, I notice that the error message continued to stay here. Um, if I clean a build with command shift K, this is still here. So I'm not exactly sure on how to stop this. I don't. I don't know what this button does. Debug view hierarchy. No, nope, that's not helpful for us. Um, there's an option down here. I am looking for. Nope, that's not the one. So like hitting this, it's just going to re redo the build. And I forget what I was going to look for. All right, so this comment to the line of code is still bugging out. If I click on the error message here, you'll see that right up here. We've got issues with the main storyboard. Let's click on it. All right, so now the error goes away. We'll see that the errors go away. Now when I went back to code, though, you'll see that we're still getting this issue. It's still trying to debug it. Let's go back to the storyboard file. I'll save the file. I'll click editor. I haven't selected a view, so make sure you select the view, then go to editor and say debug selected views. And now when we go back, it's still it's still giving me this error. So what I found is that if I, I think cut this, save it, build, go back to storyboard. I might have to get rid of that that entire line. I'm not entirely certain. This is a new feature that I haven't played around much with. I'm going to refresh it, and then I'm going to try and debug it again. It, sh it should resume execution if there's no problems, but it's still, like, catching on something. So I'm going to delete line 70, and still no dice. I'm going to switch out of this, go to another code file, do a forced clean... Okay, now it's gone. So maybe you have to do a clean, click off the file, click off the file, do a clean, and then it, it goes away. So that's showing you how you can get it to crash. Now let's see if we can get this to change at runtime. And so I've had issues where I want to have the assistant editor open. So I'm going to hold the alt or option key, click on pop up view, and let's actually insert that, that line of code where it might actually make a difference. So if I say the view dot background here, the view here is what I'm loading, you're not going to see that this updates and it goes red. Sometimes I've noticed that when I was making design time changes, they were not updating. It looks like with this, and this might be a new feature, I'm not positive. I have to select the view over here, otherwise that context-sensitive menu doesn't appear. It's supposed to automatically refresh. Sometimes it doesn't, so if you manually need to refresh it, you can hit that button. If I come back over here, we could change this color to a blue color. And then if I click over here, whoop, it looks like it actually took that change. That's cool. I have noticed that it wasn't doing that in a, a previous version. This might be a new feature in Xcode's latest update, which is 6.1.1. I don't know. Again, this is a pretty new feature, but it's very useful. I can change things in code. I can also click on this and change any of these designable attributes. And I can put a custom message here. So this is kind of like building your own. And you'll see that custom message appears here. Maybe I don't want this code there, so I'll comment that out. We can come back here and see if we need to debug anything. And I guess there's nothing to show. I'm wondering why that panel shows up. If I try that one more time. Okay, so there's nothing to see because there's no crash, there's no output. So I guess that's always sort of just running in the background and it can get a little bit wonky.
So let's try putting that one more test just to, to see what's happening so that you can sort of follow along. Let's put this buggy code up top where we're trying to use a implicitly unwrapped optional before it has been set. So this is when it gets set. Now we're trying to access it. This is gonna cause a crash in the interface designer. You're gonna now see the error messages up top. And when we go to run the app, it will crash. As well, we're not gonna get any design time updates. So if I were to try and copy this code, write it down here, I'll, I'll build, I'll click back over here, ask it to refresh all views. I don't see that it's going blue. So now I'm confused and it's it's not readily apparent that we have an error. I mean, there is an error, but it's not it's not apparent where the error is. So we don't see a line number being highlighted. And this is where that editor button to debug selected views is really important because we don't see the error yet. But if I click on this and I go to editor, debug selected views, now we get into, we get a hook to debug this and we can fix the issue. And once we do that, then we got to figure out how to get it so that the issue is fixed because it just sort of hangs around here. So I tried doing a clean with the file open. It doesn't seem to fix the issue. It looks like I need to go back to the main storyboard file. That will get rid of some of our error messages. If I do a clean here, with this file still open, no dice. If I click on something else, let's get out of the assistant editor. I'll do a, another clean, that's, so that's Command Shift K, or you can find it under Product Clean. And now we'll go back to popupview.swift. Still no dice, it doesn't like this, this line of code. So I'm just gonna cut that, save that file, click on another file, do a clean, go back to the storyboard, ask it to, no, let's go back. I'm doing too many things, and now it's gone, okay. Not entirely certain, for whatever reason, I have to get rid of that line of code to make the error go away. So the, the behavior here is a little bit wonky. I I'm gonna to have to test around and, and do another video once I figure it out. But I want to share this with you because this is incredibly useful. Now, the one thing I do want to point out is that when you do this, if I'm debugging this view, so let's go to editor, debug selected view. I have a, a debug prompt and I'm not gonna go into detail on how to use that, but I can do a printout object or something and I should be able to print out self and this is all I get. So that's not very useful. It says error couldn't look up symbols. Now, normally when you do a debugger, you should see more information. So let's actually run the app. Oh, that's weird. Oh, we might have had multiple. That could be why. Not entirely certain. There was two things running. So maybe it was running for each view on the screen. I'm not certain. And so that's why we were seeing the error message. All right. So now if I were to insert a, a breakpoint somewhere in the application, so let's insert one right here. I'm gonna run the app again. Normally with a LLDB prompt, you can do PO and self, and self is the object that we see right here in our objects list. And that will print out everything you want to know about self. So this is a useful way for inspecting to see what the object is that can give you some insight. And so here we can see all the properties. We can see we have an image view, a message label, a button. Now you're noticing these are summits because they are optional values, but they're implicitly unwrapped optional so that we can actually take advantage of them. And we've got the, the corner radius. So that is how you can use the debugger. Um, one more time, let's just try and introduce that bug again. See if I can document the behavior. And I'll get rid of my breakpoint. I'm gonna go back to the storyboard file. This is gonna force the build of that file. And it's gonna update here. You're gonna see that the file has changed. We can save it. We'll see that we have the three errors. Now I wanna see what that issue is. So I'm gonna click on the, the view that's affected, which is one of these views. And then I'm gonna to go to editor, debug selected view. And now we see that we have a, a bad execution. So this is because we, we have an implicitly unwrapped optional. 
which we're not getting actually any of the output, which makes this a little bit challenging. So if you want output, I think you have to write to a file. I'm not certain. That might be the only way. Otherwise, you have to use it at runtime, but that can also be a little challenging. So you might have to go back and forth. If I were to stop this right now, run the app, you'll see that we get the error message that's sort of indicative of what's going on. So this is actually helpful for some reason. This doesn't print when we are debugging the, the view. So let's go back to the view. I think I figured out what the problem is. And if I say debug selected views, that's going to start up a debug session. We've got a, a an issue here. I actually have to hit the stop button, I think, up top to make this go away. And if I were to click that again, let's see what happens. Let's see if we get two of these happening. I'll click on this guy again, go to editor, debug selected view. And if I do a long press up here, I see that there's multiple things that are running. So if I stop one, you actually you, you can't actually hit stop button. You have to click and get the drop down to stop it. All right, so that, that solves the issue. So the problem was it was still running and I just had to hit the stop button, which is right there to get it to stop running the, the inspectable element. And then once you figure out what the problem is, you can fix the line of code and I really don't want to change the, the color to blue, so I'm going to fix that again. And if we go back to our storyboard, we should see that this updates. It's going to change from blue back to the light gray that I had set previously when I was working on this control. And everything should be working, no errors up top. If I go ahead and run the app, you will see these custom views appear on screen. Uh, one of the cool things that I didn't show you is that you can actually dynamically change some of these properties like the the corner radius. So it's at 10 right now. I could change this up to 20 and you can see that that is going to update. If I want to go up to 40, that's great. Now, if you had a square one of these, you can actually create a circle by using a corner radius of half the, uh, the width and the height. So this is 300, but it's not a, a full circle. So I'd have to do 150 for the corner radius and we sort of would get an effect. But because it's not a perfect not a perfect square, you're going to notice some weird artifacting on the corner. So you would have to adjust this to, to fit that. All right, so that is how to debug a IB designable view that has IB inspectable attributes that you can control at design time in Xcode 6. If you like this video, click the like button and subscribe for more videos. And I'll show you some more interesting things, just post a comment or something about how to work with Xcode. I also teach courses online that are, are much more structured than just a, a one-off video on YouTube.